So I just wanted to show you some of the interfaces that I mentioned the last time that we met that I think uh, have some really cool elements that we could steal in the development of a more compelling user interface for WebLogo and or StarLogo. Bryce is one of the first 3D modeling, probably the first 3D uh, applications that I used way back around 96 or 97. This interface has changed very little since then. It was so innovative back then. Uh, now it looks more familiar than it would have, but it uses a room-based paradigm that I think would work really well for web logo and star logo. So the idea that you would have a programming room and a space land room and maybe an assets room or breeds room to avoid some of the confusion around buttons versus areas versus windows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if we go back to create for a minute, I'll just click on a sphere so that we can see how we navigate in this world. Kai Krauss, who created the interface, really incredible designer, came up with this idea that he would use three-dimensional icons to allow you to manipulate the space. So let's actually add a cube. I'm going to move that around. Notice in this edit room, I also have 3D icons that I'm using. Basically like virtual trackballs and virtual joysticks and whatever you whatever you want. So anyway, I can now more easily show that things it's really really easy, very intuitive for for children in particular to be moving around, navigating in that space. I think more intuitive than the current Star Logo TNG. And I can also render and I wanted to talk to you about the idea of rendering for star logo or web logo it might be particularly important for web logo where you're sacrificing speed of simulations. If students or users have the option of rendering their simulation, it means yes, they would have to wait a few minutes from the time that they run their program to where they would see the animation, but then they would see it in a really smooth and potentially much faster environment. And I believe you could have far more agents and have it be a practical animation of the simulation. Then they could also save those rendered simulations uh, as video files, particularly YouTube, as a really easy way to share. I think it would give a whole other level to the logo world. Um, so this is, this is pretty much Bryce. You can also change the sky really easily. So they have libraries of sky backgrounds. I know right now you just have that sort of static. Anything from a simple gray or white background, black. Uh, let's add a daytime cloudy background. And it's also affecting light. So it seems that eventually it would be great to have some some control of light, color of light, uh, but in the short term, at least being able to define what the background is in the same way that you can apply a texture to um, the ground plane, to the patches, feels really important to me to be able to do that. And in Poser, I'm going to show you a way that they came up with a really cool solution uh, that almost takes note from traditional animation on how to have a how to give users control of a backdrop in sort of a studio environment. One more thing I wanted to show you in Bryce, if you haven't seen it before. Bryce was the first program that allowed you to edit terrains in an incredibly intuitive way using 2D graphic paint tools. So first let's get our sky back to a neutral so that the lights aren't kind of using what we're doing here. Okay. And 
then I'm going to edit this terrain. And notice when I click on edit, I'm going in and into an edit room. I really like that idea. It really helps to focus on what the, the current task is. So I have a terrain canvas, which is a 2D grayscale image that's affecting height. So darker means lower elevation, brighter means higher elevation. I'm going to start from scratch and just paint in. Let's see. And then I'll close it. Let's make a volcano kind of thing here. Something like a volcano. I can raise and lower. And again, it's just using 2D filters and then red rate on this height information. And then I can also use other 2D filters like posterize, which works really well in here. So posterize gives me a more inorganic look. So if, if we're doing some sort of science fiction film, literally use something like that. I'm going to raise that a little bit more because I lost some of my elevation information. Except that. Way so you can see you open a little bit. And let's change the texture to they have some height based textures, which is really cool. The higher the elevation, it uses a different texture, like snow at the top of a mountain, um, flowing lava, it looks like. Let's see if this actually works. I don't know, that's just some crazy thing, but it gives you the idea that you can get all sorts of interesting futuristic buildings this way. So a possible alternative to SketchUp as being the only way to bring things in. The, one that I don't, the easiest free way to bring things in. I'm gonna, the export object is relatively new. You couldn't actually export meshes before. But it looks like they do now support Colada, which is great. And also OBJ. So we should be able to bring those really easily into star logo slash web logo. I'm going to go ahead and export one as a Colada. So we test that out later. Now I noticed that the Colada in star logo though is asking for, um, it's looking for a .zip instead of a .dae. So that's something that we need to ask you about. Let me see that to my desktop as well. Shows me a handy dandy. Well, this is great. So you can be really low resolution for game for simulations, higher resolution for. Um, I'm just going to do like a medium resolution. That's really cool. Maybe it will zip all that up. That would be great. So, anyway, that's Bryce. Really fun program. Kids of all ages love it. I've taught it for years. I was a beta tester back in the meta creations days. 